Hi, I'm Michael Malvin. Um, so most of you guys have been asking, uh, how do you get into wine reviews? Um, so I'm here today to show you. Um, so what you're looking at right here is the Vivino uh, page for my personal page. So as you can see, um, it's split up in many ways. You uh, you want something easy to look at for your cover photo, not something too crazy. Um, if it's too crazy, then um, it's less likely that people are going to want to look at your page. Um, and that said, the same thing also goes for your review as well. So as you see below, I wrote a rating on this pomard, uh, the uh, Louis Jadot uh, pomard, and uh, I gave it a 3.8. Um, and I took the, uh, the, the color down, the pale ruby aroma, uh, the pale ruby in color. And, um, how I did that actually was, um, it, this book, Wine Folly, is a really good book to get. It actually has a, uh, it's by Madeline Phuket and, uh, Justin Hamak. And this book is freaking filled with everything but in particular what you guys might like is their uh their color page and this makes it really easy to put your wine over check what color it is before you even know um what color is what because um there's a fine line between the two colors and or between any two colors and you want to get it right you know you want to make good reviews that people react well to. So obviously then I go into aromas. That's usually where I start first is by talking about the smell um, because the phenolic sensation that you get from smell um, is huge. Um, so I wrote raspberries, rose. Yeah, the rose was nice on that. Dry, easy to drink, lively. Um, Lively mean, meaning high in tannins, um, medium body, light texture, taste cherry, strawberry, blackberry, smoke, earth, get that leathery tobacco. When you really start going for those darker feels, you start pulling things out of wines that people don't usually drink. That's when people go, hey, look at that. That's, that's interesting. Um, that's a good review. And... The last thing is um, pairings. I mean, bacon fillets with parm crisp. I made that. Um, I put bacon, wrapped it around um, a filet mignon, um, like one like this guy, and put a little stick in it, put that in the oven, cooked that up, made some parm crisps by uh, putting Parmesan with some, um, some like flour or something, built it into like little cookie type things with string beans. It was fantastic. Um, I also think that it would be great with game. So that, that additional comment there, great with game, uh, that's good for other people who are looking to pair it with things. So in a way, that's, that's helpful. Um, next thing I, I kind of want to go through is um, something that many people have trouble with, and that's engagement. So if you, you post a lot of... Uh, good content, um, that's something, but you're not really going to get the same amount of engagement on your page, and that's really what drives the rank in the U.S. So um, here you can see uh, Manoush Hristov commented three days ago, cheers, Melvin, so with the wine emoji. So that, that's usually like a, a big thing that people do. I don't like when people put the exclamation point after because then it doesn't tag my name in the comment. Um, and you want your name tagged as many times on comments. So in a way, uh, you could see that comment as uh, uh, an offensive, but it doesn't matter because I don't think that's what Manoush meant. And Manoush has been following me for a while and he's actually commented my name without the exclamation part too. So. But Tim Dickert, like, look at this guy. This guy uh, ranked one in the U.S. And by commenting all these, I was able to, like, kind of 
reach out to some of these like big guys who actually commented on my stuff and actually like my rating. Um, and originally when I was writing these ratings, like these ratings were not good, you know? Um, if you go down to some of the earlier ones, uh, let's see, uh, show more. Show more. I've been rating a lot of wine, as you can see. Okay. So, like, yeah, like this one, super dry. The So, for the Joseph Spritzer Riesling Trocken, super dry yet holds elegant long finish more on the acidic side with honey dip pear of cider green apple. That's not much. That's uh, gives us some fruit flavor, tells us if it's dry or it's dry and it's not sweet. Um, and it tells us how long it is and says it's more on the acidic side. So, I mean, that is kind of good. It works. It's better than a lot of ratings out there. But it's nothing like the first rating we looked at, um, which rates it as a number. Um, I know I've been thinking about starting to rate it out of 100, too, um, because that's very common practice in the wine industry. But um, overall, like... If you look at the top guys, they have a precise system most of the times. So how I work around this actually is um, I got this book. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can see it now. All right. So the Wine Tasters Journal. This is uh, drink, rate, record, and remember really helpful for remembering things. Um, people forget this, but drinking wine actually helps you um, remember big memories with your friends and family. Um, some wines will take you back to times that you hadn't, you forgotten even existed and you loved and you wanted to remember and you cherish. So I think it's really helpful to write your stuff down in a wine journal. So right here, Got the classic wine journal, as you can see here. It's a little checkbox and uh, um, and descriptions. So it goes from like wine, producer, vintage, alcohol level, region, grapes, color, style, color, aromas, dry, sweet, tannins. Um, oh, and before I said lively and I talked about tannins, I actually meant the acidic side of the drink. So. Just remember that um, if it was high in tannins, it would be bitter. So um, taste, finish, food paired with, pairing success, additional comments, and then stars. Super simple, but I've been writing in this, and I think it's it's a good investment. Before, uh, you know, you, you can get a moleskin. Um, that works perfectly fine, but... I've been, I, I had the moleskin. It worked well for when I had it. Every time I went to a wine tasting, it was good, but it wasn't quick. And I would find myself sometimes um, jotting things down and all over the place, not really organizing my thoughts. And this just really, the organization's there. So you just kind of input in. Um, it's just an easy routine to get into. Um, so if you want it, Wine Tasters Journal by Joe Roberts. Boom. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to look into more of the function of the website. Um, as we are predominantly this time looking at um, the website version as opposed to the mobile version, which we will get into tomorrow. So let's see. So we got, we've got a followers following type situation where um, – it's it's like a social media platform almost where you gain you can follow people, read their wines. So let's see if here on the the website, the Vivino website, it seems that there's not really an easy homepage to access, and it's more trying to make you buy wine, um, which is actually kind of smart. And I've seen them try and do that on the on the mobile app as well, but. Really what they're doing is they're taking your ratings and they're turning it into some sort of algorithm, which then pumps out wines that may suit you. So um, the wines that they are giving me right here, for instance, Earthquake. I mean, come on. Do you know me? Like, 
Earthquake's good and all, but it's nothing crazy. Um, and most of these I would, I'm not really too much of a fan of. Although the Montepulciano de Abruzzo, oh, that's nine bucks. That's a cooking wine. All right. And that's be best sellers in Greenwich. Oof. All right. So let's go up to, oh, Costa Brown. The vino offers. So the cool thing is I actually asked for an offer on Costa Brown, and now they're putting up an offer on my page, which is good. However, this is not the right Costa Brown. This is not the, co I wanted the Santa Rita Hills, not the Gaps Crown Vineyard, please. So they definitely got something wrong there. Hopefully they fix it soon. Um, yeah, so definitely like, there's definitely some flaws in how they match wines, and I think that has to do with like the rating system and who rates it. I mean, it's still kind of small in terms of how many people use it. I mean, there is a fair amount of people, but the regulars, like no one's getting paid to write reviews over and over again. I feel like if you offered up money to have people write reviews, you'd get better reviews, you'd get better matches on wines, get better tags um and just overall you'd get more people buying your higher priced wine so um greg bybee wine editor at vivino i mean uh dude let's uh let's work on this um let's pitch it to someone because i want to be seeing the santa rita hills and not the gaps crown um i know it's hard to find sometimes but i mean especially for a good price but that's what I want, and you should give me what I want because that's a demand, and that's how supply and demand works. And I think if you can really get the supply and demand thing right with Vivino, you could definitely sell way more wine, and we want to make you money. So as it looks right now on this website, it seems like it's not a whole lot. It seems like it's more focused towards um, selling people wine um, through pairings. I mean... I didn't check this out, but this is kind of cool. You can go beef, lamb, goat cheese, and they show you wines that are good. Um, that's an interesting thing. Like, most stores don't actually have that. And I think that's that's definitely a cool thing, definitely something that we should think about when comparing Vivino to other wine stores. Um, plus, the interface is pretty, pretty easy to use. Um, you've got this ratings thing, which is really cool because... Um, it's making me realize how much I actually like Pinot Noir. Um, because before I thought I actually liked Merlot a lot better. I mean, maybe I do, but I, I end up drinking a lot of Pinot Noir, so that must mean something. Um, yeah, so top ratings, wish list. That's, a, that's another cool thing. The wish list is something that they had on their mobile app as well. And... It's basically you see a wine that you like see on wines or something or offers or any of these like little things that pop up. Or if you want to just put like a bookmark on a wine, um, you just hit the highlight thing or the wish list button and it just goes right into your wish list. So I can see, oh, like uh, someone commented on a Chardonnay 2013. I said, oh, wish listed it right now. Going to try it out. Going to see how it tastes. Um, cheers. Um, good way to... Uh, to create engagement is uh, by buying wines that other people have rated and then rating them again um, and testing people out. Um, there's definitely a community here um, and a lot of people like this stuff. So yeah, that's about it on Vivino. It was nice talking to all of you and soon we will get to the mobile app and from there, uh, I'm just going to play some music out. So here we go. Boom.